Hi, hello, and welcome to my channel if you're new. Welcome back if you've been here before. Nice to see you again. What are the odds? What are the odds? So today I figured we were going to read some stories. Some spooky stories to be specific. So I found this Reddit um, called Royalty Free Horror Stories. So hopefully that's going to not create any issues when I'm reading them. You know, some people don't like their stories read and that's alright. And apparently the stories on this one are supposed to be okay to read. So I'm hoping that's true. Also, if you can hear a bit of a noise in the background, I apologise. That is my computer. It's a bit loud because I'm filming on my phone. <laughs> so I have to use my computer to read the stories. So anyway, let's just get right into it. I would like to share with you an experience I had about 10 years ago, give or take. I learned several years after this incident, what happened to me is what doctors call sleep paralysis. I say they're full of shit. It really happened. I do not use drugs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Outside of caffeine and nicotine. I do not drink alcohol. <laughs> A funny thought. I like this person, I like their energy. So this was not a hallucination caused by either of those two, nor do I have any mental issues that I know of. Let's just make that clear, and clear it is. Going back about a year before this incident, at that time I was really into ghost hunting shows. I watched and recorded any and every show I could find that was about a team of ghost hunters investigating haunted places. I like that too, I... I get you. I like it too. <laughs> I agree, they are very interesting. Some were really good and others just sucked. No disrespect. That's fair, honestly. I remember watching an episode of... Wait, in order to post on here, I can't use any real names, places or addresses. Okay, let's see if I can do this. I remember watching the show where the lead hunter guy is a muscle-bound jerk who don't like bullies, but in turn is one himself. He orders his crew around like he owns them and they follow him blindly like sheep. I think you know the one. It's a good show, at least it used to be. You're talking about that? The one with the guy that's like really popular in America, I think. Yeah, never mind, I don't know the name, never mind. That didn't narrow it down at all, did it? No. This is our evidence, our ghost adventures. Anyway, they were investigating. Oh shit, here we go again. I'm guessing you can't say it. That's what it means, probably, yeah? Clear's throat. <coughs> They were investigating a bar owned by an old country singer, located in one of the southern states, who wrote a semi-popular song about a girl. I know that one. Everyone in the paranormal community says this place is truly haunted. Hold on, I will actually search this up. Okay, yeah, I looked it up. <laughs> I had to look it up because I couldn't remember the name. I'm really bad with the names. But yeah, it is the one I was thinking about. It's the Bobby Mackeys and the song is the Gerana one. I actually really like that story. And the song too, it's kind of fucking good actually, not gonna lie. Okay, now that's over with. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> back to the story. They were down in the basement, I think. It's been a while since I've seen it, and to this day, the only episode of that show I will never watch again. Interesting. They were talking with some guy about what goes on there. When up, when up in the left corner of the screen, there appeared a shadow figure. Figure? Figure? <laughs> a shadowy figure wearing a cowboy hat standing in the doorway. At this time in the show, they stopped the film and pointed out that when they were actually down there, they didn't see this figure and only discovered it while reviewing the footage. That's just the case, isn't it? I was naive back then and didn't really know much about the paranormal. I figured, it's a TV show. What harm could it really do? Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> Boy, were they wrong. I'm sorry. It's... Never mind. <laughs> I now know that ghosts, entities, or whatever you want to call them, can follow you home from places and are made up of energy and can travel through any energy source they want, and one did. Interesting. Now that I've given you the backstory to this story, let's proceed with the reason I'm actually writing this. Yes, please. Many years before this incident, an old friend of mine, back when I was 11 or 12, who I met through playing baseball in the same team, Anyway, he had recently bought a house and was looking for someone to just give his old trailer slash mobile home to, which is where this incident happened. We had lost contact over the years, but unbeknown to me, he had kept in contact with my father. Father? What are you doing? 
My father gave him my number. He called me up and made me an offer I couldn't refuse. A free trailer, just pay it, pay lot rent. Oh hell yeah, I'll take it. I'm not entirely sure what that is. Maybe because I'm not American. I'm sorry if I don't know that stuff, but maybe that's a thing in America. Pay lot rent. Interesting, no? The trailer was old and needed, needed work, but it was a good deal. I moved in, did some minor repairs, and a couple weeks after that, I invited my father and stepmother over for dinner. My stepmother is what she calls an old soul. She can sense when things are not right with the universe. <laughs> she took one look at the place and said, there's bad juju here, I don't like it. Every time she came to visit, she was nervous. She wouldn't sit still, always looking down the hallway. She eventually stopped coming. She said it was too thick for her. Oh. Has she seen the ghost? Got that ass, huh? Got that trunk. Steph mom. Hey, Mike, how old is your mom? What? No, not like that. No, it is. It is like that. Interesting. Whatever that meant. I just thought she was nuts. I know now she's not. Yeah, she just liked that thick ass. Or maybe didn't since he couldn't come anymore. I get it. I lived there for many years, had some strange things happen. Seeing apparitions out of the corner of my eyes. Voices, cold breezes, etc. I just chalked it up to bad lighting. Outside noises, insulation issues. Some rational explanation until that night. The night that changed my whole belief system forever. The night I will never forget. I was laying in bed, asleep on my back, like I always do. Are you a demon, sir? You sleep on your back. It's on your back, like a log, like... Like a fucking corpse. You just sleep like that. Come again? Excuse me? Pardon? You just sleep like that. No. No, you are the demon, sir. You are the demon. People who can just sleep like a log, like a fucking dead body. You are a demon. How the fuck do you sleep like that? Unless you're pregnant and you absolutely have to. How? I don't understand. I don't understand. You have powers I do not understand. I fear you. I'm sorry, anyway. <laughs> Let's continue. When I woke up and noticed a black figure standing in the doorway of my bedroom. I don't like that. The hallway light was on. I always leave it on in case I need to make a bathroom run late at night. The light from behind the figure showed it had a head, two arms and two legs, but no eyes. Interesting. Is it just glowing? through the eyes, it's like there's just black material everywhere like the shadow and then there's just two holes where the like, light comes through, <laughs> that would be fucking terrifying. I was just standing there, it was just standing there, sorry, sorry. I blinked a couple of times to make sure I was seeing what I was seeing and sure enough I was. Only this time when I looked at it, it was wearing a cowboy hat. The moment I realised that, I physically saw it jump from the standing position in the doorway of it. <sighs> Oh god, I'm sorry that I read that. That was that was that that creeped me out. I didn't I ooh ooh I I didn't like that. I did not like that. No 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 no. I'm alone at home right now. This is I mm, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna stop being such a fucking pussy. I'm sorry. Okay. Only this time I was wearing a cowboy hat. Yeah. The moment I realized that, I physically saw it jump from the standing position in the doorway over top of the bed and land on top of me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that mental image at all. Okay. Hi. I'm back. My, I don't like that. My camera literally stopped. Or my phone, actually. Just as I read that creepy thing, my camera decided that that was a good time to stop recording. No, 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 no. I don't like this. This story scares me now. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a bit worried right now. I, I, I don't like it. Don't like it. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna read. I'm sorry, I'm getting a bit paranoid. I'm gonna read through this one. <clears throat> and um, yeah, tried to do two more. Anyway, where was I? 
So like, I don't know exactly where it stopped, but I think I managed to say that it jumped on top of the person in the story. I don't want to read it again, it scares me. I, it jumped on top of the person in the story as the lion in bed. And it says, my body became stiff and able to move. Out of my peripheral vision, I could see my wife lying next to me. I tried to scream, but nothing came out. I saw the figure sitting on top of me. It reached its hands down onto my chest and started squeezing my lungs. I couldn't breathe. It was squeezing the life right out of me. You know, at this rate, I fucking believe you. <laughs> I don't like it. There I was, gasping for air, paralysed and unable to make a sound. Just when I thought I was about to die, a series of intensely bright white lights started flashing all around the room, like a strobe light on steroids. Wow. Huh? Wow. I closed my eyes to shield them from the lights. It was that bright. All of a sudden, my body jerked a couple of times like a convulsion and then stopped. I opened my eyes and it was gone. I was able to breathe again. I lie there, heavy breathing for a good 20 minutes, too scared to move. Fuck, yeah. Same. I wouldn't, not only would I not move, I don't think I'd be able to fucking recover. That's so scary. When I finally got the nerve to try, I slowly moved my right hand over to my nightstand. Still shaking from fear, I grabbed my phone to check the time. Like, all, like I always do when I wake up in the middle of the night. The time was 3.48am. The witching hour. I didn't like that at all. Needless to say, I did not go back to sleep that night. No, same, same. I would not go back to sleep. I'd probably sage the house. Screw the person sleeping. Sage the house. <laughs> sage it. Just do something like that. Anything, really. And stay up. Like, don't sleep. I don't think I'd ever sleep again. I cautiously got out of bed so not to wake up my wife. Wake her up. What if it comes for her as well? And turned on every light in the house. Same, dude. Same. Every single one, including all the bedroom lights. How my wife stayed sleeping, I don't know, but thankfully she did. Thankfully? Is that really a good thing in this situation? Fucking help me. If you're my partner, if I'm not sleeping because of a sleep paralysis, like a demon of sorts is trying to murder me, you better fucking wake up. <laughs> I'm not letting you sleep. I made a pot of coffee, grabbed my Bible, and sat at the dining room table drinking coffee. Bible in hand until the morning came. I must have smoked at least a pack and a half of cigarettes in that three hour span of time. Inside though, that's not good. Not for your lungs, not for your house, not for anything. You didn't smoke them inside. I asked my wife if she had seen or heard anything strange the night before. She said no and I left it at that. I didn't tell her what had happened and I still haven't. She prob probably wouldn't believe me anyway. My wife and I stayed at the trailer for about two months after that. When we got the opportunity to rent an actual house, we took it. We packed, we packed all our things and moved out. Fair, I would do the same. On the last day we were ever at that trailer, my wife had left the vacuum in the back room where this experience had happened. She asked if I would go get said vacuum and I agreed. Upon entering the room, a weird sense of dread fell over me and something inside me told me I needed to get out of there quick. Uh-huh. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> I grabbed the vacuum, ran down the hallway and out the door as fast as I could, slamming the door behind me. I then turned around and yelled, you want this place? You can have it. I'm gone. <laughs> my wife looked at me like I'd lost my mind. Yeah, because you were fucking sleeping, weren't you? Through all of this trauma. My father and stepmother helped us move, along with some friends. My stepmother insisted that we drive all the vehicles that contained our belongings over bodies of water to block any bad juju. Coming with us to the new house. You know what? I trust this stepmother. I'd forgotten about her in the midst of my recording stopping but i agree with her she's a smart woman clever girl listen to her we did and have had no bad experiences in our new house would you look at that aside from a few really bad dreams i had the first couple nights we were there about the trailer but that was it yeah because you're fucking traumatized well that's my story i don't really care if you believe me or not i know for a fact it really happened bro i fucking believe you i believe you that spooked me and especially now that my fucking recording stopped just as I was telling the spookiest part, like the creepiest part of this story, my fucking recording stopped. Uh-uh. Mm-mm-mm. No.
When I was younger, I'd go visit my grandparents all the time. They lived in a one-floor house with an unfinished basement. I never liked it down there. It felt small for a big basement. There was a little door down there that was for storage, and I always got a horrible feeling when going close to it. And let me add that this was a newer house that was about six years. I don't like that. I don't like basement. Now, during the time I was about six or seven, I felt so uncomfortable going down there. Even when I was with someone, I didn't feel like it. I remember going down there with my grandma to help with something. She had to run upstairs because someone rang the doorbell. She's... She said she would be right back, even though she knew how I felt about being alone down there. But I nodded and said, okay. She was gone and I was alone. And I started to get a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. I didn't move and didn't want to. Even though the lights were on now, this is where everything started happening and it still gives me chills. The lights started to flicker and I started to hear noises and what sounded like talking and it was not coming from upstairs, but in the storage room. Sure your grandma don't like keep captives? Like maybe has a really kinky boyfriend? <laughs> like tied up, I don't know. I heard someone say my name. Okay, here is the part that freaks me out the most. The voice sounded like my grandma. No. I was confused as hell. How am I hearing her when she's upstairs? I didn't want to move, but me being curious, being the curious one I am, I started moving towards the storage room door. Are you insane? You're the kind of person who'd die first in a horror movie. Don't investigate. You leave. You run. <coughs> you don't come back again. That's what you do. Jesus, I'm so scared now. I feel like I see things in my peripheral vision. I'm sorry, I'm a bit shifty. <laughs> the closer I got, worse the bad feeling came. When I got to the door, the lights turned off in the, <laughs> the basement. Leave! I wanted to run upstairs and hide, go somewhere that wasn't the basement. Then fucking do that! That sounds like a good plan to me. Fucking run! I heard my name again for the second time. My grandma's voice asking me to open the door to help her. So I did, and I regret it. Grandma's upstairs, what are you doing? I couldn't see anything. It was pitch black. I couldn't hear anything. Oh, but faint laughing. That felt like forever. I'm sorry, this is probably so annoying to listen to, but I'm a, I'm, I'm a bit spooked after the recording thing. I'm sorry. But faint laughing, that felt like forever. But then the laughing stopped and the lights turned back on in the basement and I felt a little bit better with the lights on. But the downside, no. But the downside, I could see... A little in the storage room. Saw a small clown doll. Clowns! Fucking clowns. And my grandma hates clowns with a passion. Exactly. It's what I'm saying. And wants nothing to do with them. So why is there a clown doll? I have no damn idea. Then the lights turned on in the storage room. I saw red that looked like blood all over the place. I screamed and blacked out. And the next thing I knew, I was laying on the couch. My grandma looking at me and asking if I was okay. I have no idea if that was real or a dream, but it sure as hell felt real. Bruh. If you have any ideas, please let me know. Idea? Leave? Move? I don't like dolls, I don't like clowns, I don't like spiders and creepy crawlies. I don't like sleep paralysis things jumping on top of you at night. If you want to jump on top of me, at least make it fun, you know? Not like that. It's actually by the same person that um, had written the first one. So that's bad because <laughs> his story was very scary. Or their story, I'm sorry. And um, I'm guessing this one will also be scary. My name is Nicholas Abernathy. My friends call me Nick. I'm 32 years old with a very, very, very sound mind. I am not crazy. Okay, so if you say so. Although crazy people don't know that they're crazy. I'm 99% sure I'm not. About a year ago, I lived at 253 Dead Man's Lane. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I fucked that, aren't you? In Delaware. In small town in Delaware. I can't remember the name, but that is where the story takes place. There's a reason they call it Dead Man's Lane. Yeah, I fucking bet. I know that now. Oh, okay. I don't live there anymore. I now reside at an undisclosed location due to the events that occurred at my previous residence. Okay. I don't want them to know where I am. I hope you understand. Are you a killer, sir? Are you a murderer? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I want to know. 
The town was a very small town, a one stoplight town, a town so small that if you blink while driving through it you'll miss the whole entire town, which was perfect for me. It was a welcomed escape from the hustle and bustle of my city life, which was slowly draining me to the point of exhaustion. So when my boss at the time came to me and said that our company was downsizing and that I would be let go of, I gladly took the sev severance package and moved on with my life. I grew up in a small town, so I was familiar with the quiet and simplicity that it offered, and I longed to go back there again. So, while sitting in my big city apartment, I grabbed my laptop and started to search small town living houses, living houses for sale, and things of that sort. I came upon an old Victorian house built in the 1859. It was beautiful, dark blue with grey with dark grey trim, two floors, balcony, front porch, and a very small room at the top of the house with an octagon-shaped window in it. For some unknown reason, I've always wanted to live in a, such a house. So this was like a dream come true. The price wasn't bad, actually it was pretty good, low some might say. So I called the number displayed in the ad and made arrangement with the older gentleman on the other end to come view the house three days later. Upon arriving at the house, it looked just like the picture in the ad, except there was one small detail the ad did not say. The house was in the middle of a giant dirt field all by itself. No trees or shrubbery around, just a dirt field. Hmm. That time of year, some farmer should have corn or something growing in that in a field that big, but there was nothing. This struck me as kind of odd. The only thing beside the house in the field was one electric pole with wires running from it to the house and a transformer on top. The driveway was at least a quarter mile long with other little road branches branching off of it, going to certain parts of the field, then connecting back to the main driveway. One road wrapped, wrapped around the entire house. It seemed like forever to get there. Once there, I met an old man who said his name was Bernie or Benny or something with a B. <laughs> so me. <laughs> Someone, I'm literally so focused when I introduce myself to people on saying my own name correctly and like not being awkward and weird that I literally forget the name. The, the second after they've told me, I've forgotten because I haven't actually listened because I'm so fucking nervous that I will say something stupid or say my own name wrong yeah so i i get you i get you i can't really remember he said he was the owner of the house and that i could feel free to look around if i wanted i asked if he was coming in his face turned pale mm. as he said no i'll stay right here thank you looking back now that should have been a red flag an owner that would not go into his own house red flag alert I mean, yeah, honestly. But I was naive, blew it off, and entered the house alone. I expected it to be a bit run down and dirty, given the dirt field that surrounded it. But to my surprise, it was immaculately clean. Oh, that is spooky. When something's too clean, it's like, what have you done? Have you bleached the entire house? Have you murdered someone? Is that why it's so fucking clean in here? It looks like nobody lives here. That gives me the creeps. Like, I need to see that your house is lived in, please. <laughs> Is that just me? Is that just a weird thing I have? Probably. Completely furnished and looking like something straight out of a magazine. I went through each room in total awe of its beauty. Each room except the little room with the octagon window. I couldn't find a door or staircase leading to it. This too I found a little odd. And the, and the basement. I've never been a big fan of basement. Same. <laughs> so I figured I'll go check it out at some point. What's the big deal? It's a basement. I met up with the old man outside and we discussed and agreed on a price. He informed me that everything in the house was included in the deal under one condition. No furniture could be removed from the house or moved to any other part of the home. Everything must stay exactly where it is. You may use any of the appliances, books and things that, of that sort, but they must be returned exactly where they are now. You may add to it, but nothing can be removed. Given that all the furniture and such was from the Victorian era, I thought why get rid of it and agreed to this condition. An agreement I would later regret. I'm going to skip the part about going to the bank and financing and all that crap. No one really cares about that anyway. Moving in days were exciting for me. I finally got the house of my dreams. I just started a new job. I'm back to the quiet life. I left all my furniture and stuff at my old apartment, only packing my clothes and toiletries. I figured maybe the next guy or girl could use some of it. Anyway, I met the old man at the house, and I'm just going to call him Mr. B, since I can't seem to remember the man's name. I later found out that Mr. B lived just two blocks away with his wife for 43 years, Isabella. I never got the chance to meet Isabella, although I wish I had. 
He was an old steel mill worker. You could tell from his physique. He may have been old, but the man had muscle. He had bought the house some thirty years back with the same conditions that he had told me. He never lived in the place. Of course he didn't. He said it troubled his wife immensely from the first day she saw it. He tried to sell it many times before, but the deals always fell through for some reason. Until then, Mr. B handed me the keys. And as he did, he grabbed hold of my hand hard and pulled me to him and whispered something in my right ear. He whispered, Beware of the rain. Thank you. I. However, I'm not a cat. <laughs> I'm fine. Getting a bit moist. Mm, no. Anyway. There's a reason he said that to me. I know that now. He then hung his head and slowly walked away. How he knew. I don't know. But he did. My first couple of weeks in my new house were rather uneventful. The weather was nice with a slight breeze. Even opened a couple windows upstairs to get some airflow in there. I had asked the Mr. B about opening the windows. He said that he said that was fine since they were part of the house, not possessions within the house. So I left them open for a few days. What? On my first nights, since the place was fully furnished, I hung up my clothes, which took all of 20 minutes. I put my shampoos and such in the master bathroom, which was almost as big as my bedroom. Then went to the local grocery store for some food and drinks. I can't remember the name. It's not really important. I spent the rest of the time checking out each room one by one and seeing everything the house had to offer. Had you not done that before you bought it? About a week or so later, I finally found that door that led to the little room with the octagon window. It was a secret door panel hidden in the closet of the room I had decided to make my bedroom. Why would he not tell you that? For some unknown strange reason, something told me to push on the back of the closet. I did. The door swung open, revealing a spiral black metal staircase that led to said room. Sir. It was a very small room, about the size of a walk-in closet by today's standards. In said room was a very old desk position just under the octagon window, and a stand-up lamp to its left. Old wood planks for walls as well as the ceiling. The floor was what looked to be brand new hardwood, so I decided to make it my office, the place I would do my writing. Since I had a great view of the dirt field, <laughs> what better place to draw inspiration from? That's a joke, by the way. <laughs> Okay, good. <laughs> the rest of the house consisted of five bedrooms, a huge kitchen, a parlour, a living area, three full bathrooms, a study and a basement. Oh, that basement. Fucking basement. Always basements. <laughs> the basement was kind of creepy. I'm lying. It was real creepy. The door to the basement had little holes all along the edges, top, bottom and right side of the door, like someone had nailed it shut at one point. Okay, I'm guessing those aren't to ventilate. The stairs leading down to the basement were old and rickety and would probably fall apart at any given moment. And like the rest of the house, that was immaculately clean, like I noted in the previous passages. The basement, however, was not. There was dust and dirt and cobwebs everywhere. I had a strange, it had a strange odour. I didn't know what it was at the time, but I know now. Along the far wall, there were, there were a series of five file cabinets covered in dust. Over to the right, it looked like two metal surgical tables covered with white sheets. Hmm. In the middle of these tables, there was a small stand with a large glass container with tubes running out of it and some kind of a pump machine behind it. All kinds of knives, gloves and masks scattered all over the floor. It looked like no one had been down here for ages. I ran up the stairs as quickly as I could, shut the basement door and never went down there again. About a month or so went by, all this time, I couldn't get what Mr. B whispered to me on the day I moved in out of my hand. So every morning while drinking my coffee, I really miss coffee. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I would check the weather app on my phone to see the conditions for the day. On that day, it was going to be partly cloudy with a 60% chance of rain. Okay, maybe now we'll see what there is to be afraid of. Just like the app said, it started to rain about 4pm. Didn't last long, but that's how it all started. I was in my office. The rain started to fall. Almost as soon as it did, I started to hear music. Not today's music, but orchestra music. Big band music. I didn't have a radio app here. I'm in the middle of a field, so it couldn't be my car. I started to get concerned. Where was it coming from? I walked down the spiral staircase to the room across from mine. As soon as I put my hand on the doorknob, it stopped. And the rain did too. That was weird, I thought. Must have been my imagination. The rain hitting the gutter somehow made the acoustic sounds of music in the house. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. There had to be a reason. 
After a while, I stopped thinking about it and went on with my night. How? A few days later, I ran into Mr. B at the hardware store. I told him about what had happened. He didn't seem surprised. He just said, I tried to tell you and left. Could have fucking told me straight out, couldn't you? Not been the fucking Riddler. The day that changed my life forever happened about two weeks later. I was at work. I had taken an assistant manager position at a local department store. The pay wasn't as good as my previous job, but it wasn't as stressful either. During my shift, this guy came up to me out of nowhere and asked, you own the old Bennett place out the dead man's lane, don't you? I was reluctant to answer, but I finally said, yes, yes I do. He was a big guy, biker type, 50-ish with long grey hair and tats. Mm. Hey, daddy, <laughs> hit me up. He said, you're braver than I am. I wouldn't go near that place. Hope you found Jesus, you're going to need him. The ride home that day was unsettling, <laughs> I bet. Everything that happened was starting to get to me. I was nervous, nervous to go home after what this guy said, what Mr. B said and the music thing, that weird basement. I was on edge, on edge so much that when I walked through the door, instead of placing my keys on the shelf by the door, I tossed my keys, hitting a small ceramic ballerina knick-knack off the shelf and breaking it. Oh shit, I said loudly. Something has not only been moved, but broken. Oh fuck, that's true, I forgot about that part. There was no way to put it back. Then I heard it. A slow growl sounding like a wild animal coming from the basement door. Then from the kitchen, then from upstairs, then from everywhere. I couldn't take it anymore. I grabbed my head and fell to my knees, falling over into the fetal position. I started screaming. Stop, stop, I'm sorry, please stop. It didn't stop. It got louder and louder. From the floor, I could see the basement. No. Okay. From the floor, I could see the basement door open quickly, then slam shut. All the doors were doing it now, except the front door, but that, that remained closed for some reason. I felt a very cold breeze go right through my body. Every light in the house was turning on and off, on and off. I managed to get to my feet. Running down the hallway towards the kitchen, the main floor bathroom door flung open, hitting me hard and knocking me backwards down the hallway. Ow, broken nose much. I lost my footing and fell to the floor. I must have hit my head because the next thing I remember was waking up on the floor hearing the sound of my doorbell buzzing over and over again. All was silent and calm except for the buzzing. The buzzing soon turned to, to loud pounding upon the front door. I pulled myself together, standing down to the door when I heard, Nick, Nick, I know you're in there, Nicholas. Answer the damn door. I opened the door quickly, only to see Mr. B standing there, shaking, sweating, not nearly the composed man I knew. There's a really bad storm coming. We've got to get out of here. I can't with all good conscience let you stay here alone. We've got to go now. The storm clouds moved in fast, at a speed I'd never seen before. Thunder started to roar. I tried to explain to Mr. B that I have broken a knick-knack. In his panic state, he said, that's the least of your worries. Let's go. The rain started falling hard. Lightning was crashing as the thunder roared on. The music started playing again, only this time Mr. B heard it as well. Then what happened next seemed like something out of a bad horror movie. Okay, continuing. The house seemed to suck Mr. B into it, nearly knocking me down in the process and sliding, and sliding him fast across the floor and slamming him into the table that laid against the adjacent wall breaking the leg of the table and forcing it to crash to the floor. Another thing broken. The floor, the front door slammed with a force so hard that it broke the front two windows completely out. Allowing the rain to pour into the house, I quickly ran over to make sure Mr. B was okay. Son of a bitch, it's too late. We're never getting out of here now, Mr. B said angrily. The growling started again, only this time it seemed he was right in front of us. I felt a real bad burning on my left arm, lifting my sleeve to see what it was. I saw three scratch marks with blood dripping from the third. It's not good. Mr. B grabbed hold of his neck after lifting his hand. I noticed the same three scratches, only this time all of them were bleeding, bleeding bad. The house is coming alive, he screamed. Upstairs, we must get upstairs. A lightning bolt hit the electric pole outside, causing the house to go black. Now in total darkness, hearing that music, hearing that growling, and both of us bleeding, I quickly pulled out my phone to turn on the light so we could at least see by that. Mr. B's phone was broke in the crash. I turned on my light, only to notice the cellar door slowly opening. No. Only to notice the cellar door slowly opening by itself. 
the growling getting louder, and what appeared to be a black mass of goo pouring from the basement door and heading in our direction fast. I screamed, look out, and grabbed Mr. B by the arm and pulled him out of the way, barely escaping the goo. We ran frantically up the stairs. What should have been 20 to 25 steps seemed more like 30 or 40. This house is alive, Mr. B yelled. Finally reaching the top, I shined the light down the hallway of the doors. That was the second floor. The hallway seemed to be longer than I remembered, with extra doors that I had never had before. The walls were expanding and contracting, like the house was breathing. There was a red substance resembling blood, oozing from the ceiling, ceiling down the walls. My bedroom was at the end of the hallway. Mr. B and I made a run for the last door on the left. My bedroom. We ran and ran, and just as the red goo was about to hit the floor, I arrived at my bedroom door, grabbing the knob and opening it quickly, looking back, hoping to see Mr. B right behind me. But unfortunately, he was not. Shining my light down the hallway, I could see that he was about a quarter of the way from the door, running as fast as he could, but getting nowhere. It was like he was running on a threadmill. The red substance oozed down onto the floor and quickly made a beeline straight for Mr. B. I screamed, Give me your hand! I stretched my hand out as far as I could. Mr. B extended his. But it was too late. The red substance reached his shoe. Mr. B screamed in agony as the substance began to burn him. The smell of burning flesh filled the hallway. As more of the substance reached him, Mr. B ignited into flames. I can still hear his screams in my head. It only lasted a few seconds and then he was gone, and so was my friend. Mr. B was gone. Poor Mr. B, dude. I quickly ran into my room. From out of my bedroom window, I could see what appeared to be flames. When the lighting hit the pole, it must have caused the transformer to catch fire, igniting the house as well. The outside of the house was burning, but not the inside, and rain wasn't stopping it. What the hell is this place? Shining my light back into the room, I could see shadows in the shape of people appearing in the walls. Some short, some tall. Then the voices started. A woman. I'm so cold. A little girl. Mummy. An old man. Help me. I quickly ran off to my office, the only place left to go. From out of the window, I could see the rain pouring down, lightning bolts lighting up the skies. The voices continued. Down below, I could see that the rain had fallen so hard and fast that it washed away all the dirt from the field, exposing skeletal remains all around the house. Then it hit me. Oh my god, this was not a house. It was an old funeral home built in cemetery grounds. They must have removed the headstones and left the bodies. That would explain everything. What did though? Your friend come busting. In shock, I stepped backwards, my back hitting the wall and sliding down into a sitting position. My phone had fallen to the floor. The light just so happened to be shining on the doorway in the room. I mumbled to myself. I didn't know. I didn't know. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see a black mass in the shape of a person crawling through the doorway and over to me. Shrieking a horrible sound, it reached its hand like thong out as if to choke me. Totally exhausted, I put my hand over my eyes and screamed as the shadow engulfed the room. Somebody somewhere must have seen the flames and called the fire department. From speaking with my landlord and police officials, I gathered that when they found me, I was in the basement, laying in one of the tables, mumbling to myself. I don't recall any of that. Mr. B's body was never recovered. I had told the story to the police and some guy dressed like Judge Judy and they all looked at me like I was crazy. I like my new apartment. That was a quick shift. It's kind of small, like a studio apartment. I got a bed and a dresser, a nightstand and a lamp. Best of all, the rent is free. I don't have to work anymore. My neighbours are nice, a little quirky if you ask me, but nice nonetheless. I've got a bad feeling for you. There's a TV that we share in the living room, a game room where we gather and play cards and ping pong and games of that sort. I have my own bathroom, which is nice. Food is included. It's mostly just mush, but it's still food. Security here is tight. There are cameras everywhere, and there are rules. If you break those rules, the landlord will move you to a much smaller apartment with no windows. Mm, it's solitary. But gives you this very cool jacket to wear that lets you hug yourself. I like that jacket. There are a bunch of nice ladies that come by every day giving us little white pieces of candy. Oh. Sometimes they're different colours, but mostly white. Sometimes they even come at night. Oh, I gotta go now. It's bedtime. I'm excited. Tomorrow we go outside. Good night. It's a good story. Definitely a good story. I liked it a lot, actually. 
hated the crawling, absolutely hated the crawling and the basements, hate the basements. I've had a lot of trouble with my camera while filming this by the way and both times have been with um, this person's stories. <laughs> so are they cursed or something? Something you want to tell me? Hmm. <laughs> so that was the stories. I hope you enjoyed. I would like to do more of these eventually and hopefully have less camera issues and be less spooked. That would be nice. If you have some stories um, you would like me to read them out, I would love to hear them or just see them in general. I mean, you can comment them, that would be lovely. I always enjoy listening to other people's stories and what they've experienced or stories they've decided to write. I enjoy all of it. So if you want to share it with me, feel free. I would love that. Thank you for coming to my channel and sticking out with me through this. I had fun. <laughs> Hopefully you had as well. I'll see you in the next video, hopefully. Bye, 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 bye.